In today's video, we're going to do a comparison between the Pellet Head Po' Boy and the Unifira Wood Pellet Fired Pizza Ovens. I got my buddy Steve back with us again today. Hey, everybody. And we're going to see how these stack up. Let's make some pizza. Let's make some pizza. Now, as you get the Pellet Head Po' Boy, unboxing and assembly is about 20 minutes and a number two Phillips screwdriver is going to be required. The Uni is very similar, about a 15 minute unboxing and assembly, no additional tools required. Now, the Uni Fyro weighs about 22 pounds once it's unboxed and assembled, whereas the Pellet Head Po' Boy weighs about 33 pounds as it's unboxed and assembled. Now, as we're looking at overall craftsmanship of the two ovens right here, the Pellet Head Po' Boy is a double wall insulated 430 stainless steel body with 304 stainless steel heat related parts. We have a four folding leg design on this model, and then we have a top wooden carrying handle for transportation. Now, as we're looking at craftsmanship on the Uni Fira, we have a insulated carbon shell body with a powder coating. Now, the Uni Fira is a three leg tripod design. Legs are going to fold up for transport, fold down when you're getting the unit placed and ready to cook. I do find that the Po' Boy offers us a little bit more stability with the four legs, but both units are pretty solid. Now the Uni Fira does not actually have a handle on top like the Po' Boy, so when it comes to moving this unit, we're going to pick the whole unit up, and Uni does offer kind of an optional transport bag. All right, let's talk a little bit about what's included with the Pellet Head Po' Boy. First off, we have an owner's manual right here. Second, we have a barbecue fan. This is actually our burn pot blower, but we're gonna cover that just a little bit later. We've got a 24 pack here of fire starter sticks, so quick, easy way to light the fire. We have an infrared handheld temperature gun, absolutely key. This is to check the temperature of the stone, a must have for a pizza oven. And then lastly, we have the pizza peel with the signature Po' Boy that's in there. Obviously you have to have a peel, be able to transfer that pizza into the oven. Now let's check out the Uni Fira. So the Uni Fira, as it comes, is just the oven. Obviously we have the chimney and the hopper and so forth, but we don't have any other accessories with it. So when you're looking at an Uni Fira, there are a few other accessories that you're gonna want, such as a pizza peel, and obviously the infrared handheld temperature gun. It's a must. There's all sorts of different fire starter and so forth that's out there. You do have an owner's manual with this unit. Always important to keep that handy, read through that thoroughly, and make sure that you're following all the outlines. Let's go ahead and take a look inside these ovens and check out some specs. So as we're looking at the Pellet Head Po' Boy right here, we have a 12 and a half inch stone with a four and three quarter inch distance from the stone to the top for our opening height. As we look at the fiber right here, we have a 13 and 3 8 inch stone with a 3 and 3 quarter inch distance. So top opening to stone, 3 and 3 quarter inch. So we have just a little bit wider of a stone with the fiber, but just a little bit smaller of a height clearance. Let's take a closer look at the chimneys. We have two very different designs from the Po' Boy to the fiber. So let's start with the Po' Boy. What we have is we have a two piece telescoping chimney design. So when this is all the way down, we're at 17 inches height. As we raise that all the way up, we're at 34 inches height. Now we have a little rain cap that's there on the top. And this is a twist lock design down into the unit. I only recommend telescoping when the unit is completely cool. But I will say this, when we have a telescoping design like this and we're able to create more height with our chimney, we have better draft. Again, uh, these ovens are working on natural draft. And as we're able to create more draft, we generally have a cleaner fire. We have a little bit more of an even fire that's inside there while we keep the smoke out of our eyes. As we look at the Uni Fira, we have a two-piece chimney design that's on here. So those just simply pop together and we have a snap lock that goes into the oven. On the side, we have a small handle or a small flipper that's on there that has a damper that's on the inside, spring-loaded damper. So we do have some control, but I would say that it's not nearly the level of control that we have with a telescoping chimney. Now on top, the cap actually acts as a pellet scooper. So we can dump pellets from there into the burn pot. And then when we're done cooking with the unit, we can place it right back on top. Coming around the back side, we're gonna take a closer look at the burn pot, fire pot in both the Fira and the Po' Boy. So first on the Po' Boy, Steve, let's pull that out. So we have a wooden handle that's on there. We have a small pin that removes, and then we can use the blower accessory that comes with it to provide additional air into that burn pot. Providing supplemental air is gonna allow us to hit those temps quicker. It's gonna allow us to get restarts faster. Pretty heavy duty burn pot design, one piece steel, designed for long burns, high heats without having any warpage. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Fira, Steve. Fira is going to just be pulled out with your hands, no handle on there. This is a two-piece light stainless steel design. You see those two just pull right apart. Pretty straightforward and simple. 
and we just push that right back in there. Now with both of these ovens, I would say at times when we're open the doors, if we have heavy draft that's coming in, we are going to have some flames that kind of come out the back. So keep all combustibles away from the back end and never see any children, pets, make sure to keep an eye on that. We continue here in the back, so we're gonna just take a closer look at the fuel hoppers or how we're adding the pellet fuel to the unit. So we'll start with the Po' Boy. Po' Boy has a kind of a tilt down hopper that feeds directly into the fire pot. What I've noticed with this is that we do have to inspect or add additional fuel to this about every 60 seconds or so. But the pro behind that is, is that I'm always in control of the temperature of the oven. When we're cooking pizzas, it really depends on the crust. I mean, sometimes we want that stone at 650, sometimes we want it at 900. Sometimes we're cooking steaks, chicken, veggies, and we may want different temps inside that oven. So one thing that I really like about the Po' Boy is that we are really in control of the temperature that's in there. Obviously, we are having to keep more attendance and add fuel to it as we go but we're absolutely in control of the overall temperature of the oven. Now, as we take a look at the Uni Fire right here, we have kind of a flip up top. It's got like a little silicone handle that we're using. This is a snap lock stainless steel chimney. The idea is that once we have the fire initially started and we push that in there, that we're actually loading up this stainless steel hopper full of pellets. We'll use the little chimney cap scoop and really it's set. I don't have to add any more fuel to it. One of the things that I've run into when I've worked with this particular oven is that by loading it up all the way, we're always at max temp. You know, we're always at 900 degrees inside there. So it doesn't allow us a lot of room to control the temperature of the oven. Oven. And the other thing that I find when it's loaded like that is that it has a tendency to burn rich sometimes. So overall combustion burns rich. Notice some, you know, some blacker smoke and soot as it's initially getting up the temperature. But again, both of them I think are great options, just totally different designs. Let's take a closer look at the doors. Oven doors between the po' boy and the fire are quite different. As you see, Steve pulled down a wooden handle right there on the door. As he opens it up, pretty thick door. I mean, that's a double wall insulated door that's on there. So great heat retention with that. Really like that design on there. Let's take a closer look at the fire. So we have kind of like a silicone grip handle that's on there. And that's just an up and off. So I mean, very easy to take on and off with that. But I definitely say that it doesn't nearly have the insulation and that the po' boy is gonna retain that heat quite a bit better than the fire. Viewing window on the front side. So once we have the fire lit, we kind of have a bird's eye view inside. Looking at a couple other features that are here on the Po' Boy, one thing that I really like is I like this top temperature gauge right here. Quick glance, I can see what the internal temperature of the oven is. And then again, the Po' Boy comes with that infrared handheld digital temperature gun. And it's extremely crucial that we're able to check stone temp and make sure that that stone is up to proper temperature. And that's the most accurate tool to be able to do that with. Now with the Fyro, we don't necessarily have any kind of a temperature gauge that's on the unit. As we need to get readings on that stone, you will absolutely need one of those infrared temperature guns. That will be an optional accessory that you'll have to purchase in addition to the oven. All right, it's time to fire both the Po' Boy and the Fire Up and check out our prep time on each one of these. So Steve just pulled out the burn pot here. He's put a handful of hardwood cooking pellets in the bottom of the burn pot. And then he's using that Po' Boy fire starter right there on top. We're gonna light a match. That stuff lights pretty quick. Does a real nice job. It's a good fire starter. Yeah, I like that. So fire's lit. Go ahead and put that right in there. And then let's go ahead and pull out that wooden handle on there, Steve, and let's insert that blower. Again, that's a, a cool feature with the Po' Boy. I haven't seen that in any other pizza ovens. Again, blower goes right in. Blower takes four AA batteries. Yeah, just like that, supplying some supplemental air. And let's go ahead and fire up the fire, Steve. So same thing, we're just gonna pull out this burn pot, put a handful of pellets. You're gonna have to purchase a fire starter from somewhere. In today's case, we're just gonna use some of the Po' Boy fire starter on top there to get this one going. I believe the sticks here are a wood and paraffin combination, but they do light really nice. Yeah, I like those. I like using these because you have a little more control over it than you would a liquid or gel fire starter. Yeah, yeah, and it's not bad. Very easily. You can see how quickly this lights. Yeah, it lights nice and quick. We're just gonna slide that right inside there okay. just like that all right so both of these have the fire lit again we're just going to give about a minute and a half two and a half minutes just so we can start to get a little bit of coals with the pellets that steve originally lit in here before we start adding any more fuel to it so as we have these initially fired up, you'll see a little bit more of a black smoke. So that's something that I have noticed from the fire that it has a tendency to run just a little bit richer. And I think that's because of the draft of the chimney itself. Steve's raised up the chimney a little bit on the po' boy. So we've, we've telescoped that up. We're probably about 20 inches up, good height, but uh, so far really nice, really nice, clear, clean smoke that's coming out of there, which is really what we're looking for. 
All right, so the fire has been uh, started about two minutes ago. So Steve's gonna use that scooper that doubles as that cap for the chimney. And he's just gonna load that chimney up all the way to the top. I think pros on this are that, you know, we're really loading at once. We don't have to constantly attend to the hopper. But on the other hand, it's running at full blast the entire time. And as you can see, it, it tends to create a little bit more of a richer burn, we'll say. Steve's got it all the way filled up right there, great. And now for the po' boy, we are just going to manually feed pellets in the back end. Just like that. So you can use your hands, you can use a little scoop, you can use a cup. I will say we want to avoid this surface right here. If we have pellets that land up there, we want to clear those off and make sure that all of them go right inside the hopper. Let's keep that open, see if we'll look right down there in the fire. Yeah. That looks nice. So again, we're just kind of keeping an eye on that fire. We want to load it as we need it based on the temperature we want inside that oven. Today, we're cooking pizzas. So we're gonna get these bad boys up to 900 and we're gonna get them up there quick. So as you can see, smoke starting to really churn out of those chimneys. Kind of a clearish gray smoke actually on both the pull boy and the fire right now. And again, as we're getting up higher in temp, you know, we'll start to see that change a little bit. Very normal, I think that we see that. Sometimes running a little rich as we're getting up to initial temperature. All right, Steve coming back in for another scoop. Looking pretty good. So again, when we're trying to get this thing up the temp quick, we want to keep a nice fire. I mean, we don't want to put so much fuel that we're snuffing it out, but we want to keep a real nice strong fire in there going all the time. All right, so we're about nine minutes in right now from initial startup. Uh, again, I like this thermometer on top of the po' boy. Quick read, we're at 700 degrees right now. We're doing really nice. Uh, short order here, Steve's gonna use that infrared temperature gun to check that stone temperature. And uh, we're just letting that uni crank away. Again, we can kind of go down through that little hole, get a little bit of an inspection anyway of the fire that's in there. And again, in just a few minutes, we'll check that stone temp and see where it's stacking up. All right, about 12 minutes in right here. Steve's gonna go ahead and just give a quick check on that uni. So as you can see, maybe what, down uh, three inches in there, Steve, four inches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, we're not, we're not consuming much pellet fuel here with either the uni or the po' boy. Uh, very fuel efficient, that's nice. Almost ready to check that stone. All right, we are at 14, 14 and a half minutes in right here. Top check read on that thermometer. We're sitting at 850 here on the Po' Boy. Steve, let's go ahead and get that stone a look. We want to open that oven door nice and slow. We don't want to create backdraft. What kind of a reading are we getting here, Steve? We are getting 850, 860. So we're almost, well, let me put it in towards the middle. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you always want to give a nice reading in the middle. Yeah, we're, we're well over 900. We're at 950 degrees. Great. All right, let's go ahead and close that up. Let's check that fire real quick. Good reading. So we're about 850. Yeah, about 850 here on the fire. So you see that that Pope boy does get up the temp a little bit quicker on there. Uh, handy dandy blower. We like that. It's a nice feature. We're at the 15 minute prep mark. And as you can see, we do have some flames that are shooting out of the top of the chimney here on the Uni Fira. So again, shorter chimney like that. And we're cranking. I mean, again, these ovens are up past 900 degrees right now. Let's get this pizza prep. These pizza ovens are ready to go. So I've got some nice homemade tomato sauce right there. This is a classic Neapolitan pizza, huh? Your Italian needs work. I hope your pizza comes out better than that did. I'm gonna go ahead and we are going to throw on some fresh basil. I've got some fresh oregano. I'm just gonna sprinkle just a little bit of that on there. Love me some extra virgin olive oil. We're just gonna give a little drizzle of that, just like so. I like to brush the crust with the olive oil. Adds a nice glisten, nice little toastiness on there. So I've got some beautiful fresh mozzarella. Placing a couple few pieces right on there. So we're gonna grab the pull boy pizza peel. Just a little bit of flour, want a nice transition to the stone. Beautiful. Again, we're gonna open this up nice and slow. Nice and slow. Again, nice just little shimmy. Practice makes perfect. This is gonna cook fast. So again, I want to really be checking this about every 10 seconds, 12 seconds or so and doing a rotational turn. Let's go ahead and give it a check. Just like that. Yep, absolutely time for a turn. What I have found is that this Neapolitan dough absolutely cooks faster than traditional pizza dough or any kind of pre-made crust. So 10 seconds when we're up at that 900, 950 degree temperature. Like that, and give it another little spin. 
And I like that little cheetah spotting, you know, I like that little cheetah spotting that's on the crust there. That's really what we're looking for for a true Neapolitan pizza. Again, I'm not wearing heat protective gloves, but I absolutely recommend that. I think this is our last turn. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's slide that back on there, Steve. Whew. A true Neapolitan margarita pizza done in less than 60 seconds over real wood fire. Let's take a look, Steve. Again, I like that cheetah spotting around the crust. Mozzarella is good and melted. Whoo, to perfection. Just like that. Let's go ahead and lay that down, see what that looks like. Ready for that margarita pizza to go into the uni. Stone is at nine. 50, just like that. Again, quick, wanna keep an eye on it. Every 10 seconds here. Let's see, I'm just gonna do a nice little rotation here again. Ten seconds. Yep, nice cheetah spotting, we like that. Rotation on this side. What do you think, Steve? I think we're looking pretty good on that. It looks fantastic. Yeah, very, very close as far as cook temp time uh, between the po' boy and the fire. Let's get ready for the taste test. All right, it is time for the taste test, what we've all been waiting for. So first we've got the, the pizza that came off of the po' boy. So let's give this a try first. Again, uh, nice cheetah spotting on the bottom side there. Again, as we look at that Neapolitan crust, Nice and chew, and nothing, nothing matches this, Steve. Steve. Oh, man. All right. All right, before I eat the whole thing, let's check out the pizza that came off the fire. Same thing, we've got a, we've got a great puffiness to the crust. Yeah, we've got nice layering inside there. A little more done on the bottom you know, than, uh, than we noticed here, you know, with the, uh, with the po' boy, you know, so it does seem like we have a little bit more char on the bottom in about that same period of time, you know, with relatively similar, similar results on the top. So I would say maybe with that fire up, you know, we actually want to be, you know, we may, we maybe want to turn that a little bit more frequently, you know, but uh, again, one nice thing about the po' boy, we're always in control of that temperature. But anyway, let's give the fire up a taste. Yeah, that's real nice too. But I will say, you can taste the, you know, you can taste the blackness there. So this is the po' boy. Oh, I love the way the crust looks. So the flakiness of the crust, the dough, very pillowy and floppy and foldable just like we like them. Like a true Italian. Oh, that's fantastic. Really, really good. The dough's amazing. You flip a mean dough, Taylor, you really do. So we have the dough here. There's a little more blackness on this. And I think this really points out one of the advantages of the po' boy is that it maintains uh, more uniform heat throughout the entire oven. Delicious. But as far as controlling the heat, I think you gotta give it to the po' boy. 
Yeah, I think both are outstanding pizza ovens. You know, I really do. Yep. But I think as we've gone through all of the different aspects of both of these ovens, both have the pros and cons, but end of the day, what matters is the food. It is. It's the taste of that food. And uh, I'm gonna have to say, the po' boy is the winner here, right? And I will eat the rest of the po' boy and you can have the rest <laughs> of this one. All right. It's been quite a day exploring both the po' boy and the uni fira. Right now they're in cool down mode. So I would say with both of these units, we really want to allow 60 minutes to as much as 90 minutes to cool down before we're touching any of the componentry. I will say that the Uni Fyro with this powder coating finish around the shell doesn't get quite as hot than what the Pole Boy does, but she's hot. So give yourself some time, let these things cool down, eat some pizza, and 90 minutes afterwards, you can take them away. Cleaning on these things is really simple. It's really basic. So warm soapy water, we're just gonna wipe down the outside. On the inside, I mean, pellets burn really, really clean. So it's not like we're accumulating a bunch of ash or a bunch of, you know, soot on the inside. Periodically, I'll scrape down the stone. After I do a cooking session, I'll pull out the burn pot. You'll have some fly ash in there and I just dump that into a non-combustible container. It's pretty straightforward, pretty hands-off as far as the cleaning aspect goes. As we're looking at price points on these, we've already showed you kind of what comes with Po' Boy, what comes with the Fyra. Po' Boy right now is running at $249 shipped. That's within the U.S. The Uni Fyra is running at $299 shipped. So the Po' Boy is a little lower in cost. Again, we get a few more accessories along with it, so it's a nice value with it. And I know that Pelethead also offers an additional accessory kit where you have some, you know, some fire starter, you've got a lighter, you've got a pizza rocker. So they offer some cool stuff and we'll put we'll put links below the video so you have access to those. The Uni Fyro offers a three-year limited warranty. There's a registration card that you have to mail in for that. The Po' Boy offers a one-year limited warranty. No registration card needed. It's, it's automatically in the system. I think both of these are fantastic units and I think both of them make great pizza to be perfectly honest you know at the end of the day it comes down to what features you like but uh, i think both steve and i agree that the uh, the po boy was the champion of the day